do a room check here and see. And since a lot of transitioning questions are coming in, how many, raise your hand if you study UX research in school. Any, anyone that studied the subject on UX research in school? It's a trick question. <laughs> Not a lot of people. Oh, wow. We're seeing some hands go up. That means these programs are, are popping up, Mike. I think we talked a bit about that as well. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, you know, here's, here's an interesting thing here. The three of us come from different backgrounds. I mean, social backgrounds come from psychology, sociology, and, and, and um, also Kyle, Kyle comes from, you know, uh, a, a similar background as well. How do we, how have you guys found ways, and this may have been a long time ago, so you should be in the field for a while, adapting skills. We know that there are expert researchers that are not UX researchers. So when, when it comes to adapting skills, pre-existing skills, what is that like? What was that like for you, Kyle? Yeah, well, I I have a major in Latin American studies. Um, so I'm not a sociologist, I'm not a psychologist. I'm well, very much learned on the job. Um, so I have a couple of examples. So I did teach English um, in, in Santiago, Chile after I graduated college. And I think there's a couple like really important parallels there. One is what engages people. So when you're in front of a room of 18 or 22 year olds, and you know, they, it's after lunch and they're learning English because they have to, but they really want to be construction managers in, you know, Chile. Um, they're like not that excited about learning English. So how do you engage people? I think this is such a critical tool, not only in actual execution and fielding of UX research, but in stakeholder relationships. Um, so what motivates your, your stakeholders? Like what motivates your cross-functional team? How do you engage them? That might look a lot of different ways. For some people, they just want the bullet points. For other people, you know, I've heard of, um, I've heard of UX research teams creating like a mini museum or a comic book or like a deck of cards, um, like different ways to engage the insights and make them top of mind and relevant. So I think that a key piece is about engaging. And I think that for me was like, well, you're standing in front of a class of a bunch of people who are maybe not that interested in what you have to say. How different is that from a research readout? You know, I think, I think it's pretty similar. Um, and then the other thing I'll say is uh, just like going back to, to playing music. When you play music and you're in a band with three other people or the bands I was in, there was no main songwriter. So someone's doing something, you're like, yeah, that's cool. Okay, let's do more of that. Okay. And you're like, all four of you are working together on this thing. And like, I don't play drums. And I also don't know how to write code. Like, so I need the drummer and I need the person who writes the code in order to get the stuff done. Um, so I think like really focusing on collaboration and the relationships with the people you work with is a critical part to, to Mike's point, to exerting influence to make the products better for people. Uh, that, that's a great point. Mike, how about you? Yeah, uh, I mean, so my backgrounds are pretty closely related to computer science. Uh, working with technology, you have to understand to be able to talk to the engineers and uh, be able to kind of help with that influence. And then uh, sociology, uh, Psychology and sociology and anthropology are three of the fields that most of research methods have evolved out of. Um, and there's still a lot of untapped methods within those fields that um, we can continue to leverage. So definitely if you have any of those undergrads, you are already set and even better if you have a, a master's or higher in any of those fields uh, to be a very successful uh, UX researcher. Uh, so. Definitely don't worry at all about transitioning there, uh, especially if you, like like me, I specialize, uh, when I did the PhD in sociology, um, specialized in methods and uh, theory. So a theory is actually something that we probably don't talk enough about in UX research anymore, because there are a lot of pieces that we can apply, but it's also something that we can't talk about to our 
partners and peers within organizations because then their eyes will really glaze over and you never want their eyes to glaze over. Um, that's how you lose impact. So that, that's where all the kind of games and interactions and collaborations that Kyle talks about are uh, really helpful. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we can talk enough about collaborating. Uh, I often say UX is a team sport uh, and UX research within UX design, it's, it's just essential, right? Uh, and you want those teammates there. You want to be able to, to achieve your goal ultimately. Let's jump to an interesting question. So uh, Michaela here asks, if you consider yourself more aligned with quantitative research, 